Hey everyone, it's Ari from DAT Bootcamp. Today I'm going to teach you about the pattern folding section on the PAT portion of the DAT exam. The pattern folding portion of the exam presents a two-dimensional image and requires you to fold that image into the plane of the paper. This is pretty important. You have to fold this image into the plane of the paper and determine which of these shapes emerges from that portion. This is probably one of the most challenging sections of this exam. Uh, but it's actually relatively easy to beat. You have to understand that you have to focus in on specific parts of the question. When I started doing this section, I always started out by trying to imagine this whole thing folding into my head and rotating it around until I got the correct answer, which is uh, practically impossible, I guess, unless you're a genius. What you got to do is you have to focus in on a specific part of the question and match it up to the answer choices. Always go to the answer choices and see what can be eliminated. So let's start off with A, for example. In answer choice A, you can see that this piece does not exist anywhere in the question. Right after that, you can tell answer choice A must be wrong. This piece does not exist anywhere here in any of these shapes. Let's move on to answer choice B. This piece right here does not exist in any part of the question. Answer choice B is wrong. Let's move on to C. This piece does not exist anywhere in the question. Answer choice C must be wrong. Just like that, we already answered this question in less than 20 seconds, and we know that answer choice D must be the correct answer. We can also see that certain pieces of answer choice D match up very nicely, such as this piece matches up with, well, that actually matches up with two pieces, so this is, it could have been a more challenging problem. Here's the other piece right here. And that's all it takes. You gotta focus in on a specific part of the question and eliminate the answer choices. It's pretty easy for the questions that don't have any sort of patterns or shades to them. All you have to do is compare the shapes given in the question and compare it to the shapes given in the answer choices. Let's move on to a more difficult question. So for this question, it's a little more challenging now. All of these look kind of similar. Let's see what we can eliminate. Let's start off with answer choice A. Let's go, because this is not a shaded problem, let's try to identify the most unique shape in answer choice A, the most unique face. I would say this is the most unique face. It's the largest, it's the easiest to spot, it looks the weirdest. And now I want to try to find if this shape exists in this in the question. And it might be this. No, answer choice A must be incorrect because it does not fit anything. Let's move on to answer choice B. I'm gonna pick Pick a random, pick the most unique face. This probably looks like the most unique face right here. With more practice, you'll be able to tell what's a unique face and what's the faces you should look for. This looks like a pretty crazy face. Uh, that's why I picked it. And it might be, I might be able to find it somewhere in here. Let me see. Uh, right there, actually. This actually matches up pretty well to this piece right here. These two pieces actually match up pretty well. If you rotate this piece clockwise, you'll actually end up with this piece right here. I'm gonna keep answer choice B for right now. I'm not gonna to try to see if it's right or wrong yet. I'm gonna to try to see if I can eliminate the other two answer choices before I do more work. For answer choice C, we have two unique shapes. You can do this one, the top shape, or you can do the front shape. Uh, let's do the front shape since it's, like it's a little larger. So I'm gonna to try to find this face, this shape right here in the question, and I cannot, therefore answer choice C must be incorrect. And lastly, for answer choice D, I would probably pick the top face because it has the most amount of sides. So I'm gonna try to find this image, this shape, this face in the question, which you cannot, therefore answer choice D must be incorrect. So there we go. We already eliminated three answer choices. We're left with the only one. Answer choice B must be the correct answer. All right, so this question is more along the speed of what you're gonna see on the real DAT. You're going to have to actually fold up this shape 
in this care in this, in this case it's a dice problem you're gonna have to fold this dice up and you have to determine which of these patterns it matches and these all look pretty similar but they're all very small differences that make an answer incorrect or correct now remember don't try to fold this whole thing in your head and rotate it and do some crazy stuff just focus in on one part look at the answers and try to eliminate answer choices let's start with answer choice a for example for answer choice a let's see Okay, you can tell right off the bat answer choice A is incorrect. And you want to know why? It's because I'm looking at the six face right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, which matches up to this face right here, right? Now, since the six face is positioned in this way horizontally, we must be looking at it horizontally as well. There's no way the three face would be here. This is either going to be a blank face or a two-face. No way is it going to be a three-face. Answer choice A must be incorrect already. Let's move on to answer choice B. Let's see now. So answer choice B, we have this piece matching up directly with this piece. Now we're going to have to see if the top two matches correctly. Let me get a prop. So this is what the question looks like when you cut it out. We're comparing the six and the two face. If you fold this two face in, you can kind of bring it in just like that, right? You have to mentally fold just this, just these two pieces together to see how they line up. Ignore the rest of the shape. You won't be able to see that it folds in and then it folds down right? Folds in, then it folds down. We always fold into the plane of the paper, into the plane of the paper. We never fold out of the plane of the paper. So if you fold it like this, we can see that the two does match. The two does match in answer choice B. So now we have to compare the three side. We can see that yeah, the three will actually be next to the six because if I fold this up and I fold this over, you see that the three and the six are right next to each other. The three and the six are right next to each other. Now we have to see if they're orientated correctly though. So you can see that they're actually not oriented correctly. Answer choice B has the three face going the opposite direction as compared to what I, what I have here. Answer choice B must be incorrect. And you can see this because answer choice B would be correct if it was answer choice C, actually. Answer choice C is the correct answer then. We can see that if you have a six face right here, you have a three face right here, and you have a two face right here. Fold this in. And there we go. This must be what the answer looks like, which matches up with answer choice C. So answer choice D must be incorrect. Let me see what answer choice D was trying to do. So answer choice D had a six face, it had the three face correct, but it had the two face incorrect because we determined earlier that if the two was going to fold in, it would fold in this orientation with this square here and this square here. Answer choice D must be incorrect as well. The correct answer must be answer choice C.